I'm now running a little test which shows VRR flicker. Now this particular test, it causes significant and rapid fluctuations in the refresh rate of the display. So the frame rate of the test changes all the time. And you can see the refresh rate of the display in the top left there. You can see it's going all over the place. And there's accompanying flickering. So the flickering, for those who aren't familiar, it's a gamma shift which occurs in a VRR environment as the frame rate changes and therefore the refresh rate of the monitor changes. It's more notable whether there are significant fluctuations like this occurring. And it's only clearly observed for dark or dark to medium shades. So really for this part of the gradient and beyond. You can see it a little bit for brighter shades as well. But in general, the flickering is exaggerated somewhat in the video and the camera will pick it up a lot more for the brighter shades in a way that your eye doesn't really see it at all. But by eye, I can see pretty much constant flickering here, at least for the dark to medium shades. And really that's just like what I've seen on other QD OLEDs. In most in-game scenes or situations, you're not gonna get such brutal and continuous fluctuations I'm showing you here. There are only certain scenes or situations where it might be this obvious. And of course the gradient here makes it quite easy to notice as well. But I certainly have observed it in-game and also in loading screens and in-game maps, that kind of thing. There is a setting called OLED Anti-Flicker, which ASUS has included on some of their newer models. The ROG Strix XG27 UCDMG I'm looking at here, that has OLED Flicker 2.0 specifically. I've linked that in the video description. It just gives you some more background and detailed assessment of this particular feature. But the 2.0 version of the Anti-Flicker in addition to modifying the VRR range, it also includes a luminance compensation algorithm which helps subdue perceived flicker. ASUS claims it reduces perceived flicker by up to 20%. To use the feature, you have to have variable refresh rate enabled and you need to be connected via DisplayPort. It doesn't work over HDMI. If you set the monitor below 240Hz, which it seems you can actually do with this feature enabled, it will still have a VRR range which allows it to run all the way up to 240Hz, which I know is a little bit confusing, but that seems to be how they've done it. So really this feature is meant to be used for a 240Hz experience. So on the screen here, you will see the refresh rate ranges of the various OLED anti-flicker settings, and that's specific to the XG27 UC DMG I'm reviewing at the moment. It may well be the same for various other ASUS models, depending on the refresh rate that is supported. But in this case, with the setting disabled, you got 48 to 240 Hz VRR range. LFC is used below 48 Hz. The middle setting gives you an 80 to 240 Hz VRR range. LFC is used below 80 Hz. The high setting gets a bit confusing because it has a 140 to 240 Hz VRR range. It has a dead zone without VRR between 121 and 139 Hz, and LFC is used at or below 120 Hz. So that dead zone naturally kills any potential flickering, just as if you disabled VRR yourself, but LFC can't be used there as even the lowest multiplication, two times the frame rate for refresh rate, would exceed the maximum 240 hertz of the display. So I'm just gonna share some observations on this VRR flicker test. As noted earlier, with the offsetting, which I'm using at the moment, I can see pretty much constant flickering. It's in line with what I've seen on other QD OLEDs. I've now switched over to the middle setting and reopened the test just to make sure it's activating correctly. I don't know how this is gonna look on the video, but I can say that by eye, things have changed a bit. The most intense flickering observed here is observed less frequently, though given how aggressive the fluctuations are on this test, it's still fairly frequent here. Overall, I do still perceive less flickering with this setting, both less frequent and less intense compared to with the setting disabled. I'm now using the high setting for OLED anti-flicker and I've reopened the test. Really, it's similar to middle in the test in terms of the frequency of the flickering, but any flickering I observe here is pretty mild. I don't really notice pulses of more intense flickering as I saw with the other two settings. And that's simply because the refresh rate fluctuations are far less extreme now. I'm gonna share some in-game observations. I'm on Cyberpunk 2077. Now, it is difficult to show you the flickering accurately in-game, so I'm really gonna talk about this more than I'm gonna show you things. As I demonstrated in the video of the first generation OLED anti-flicker, it really depends on the fluctuations occurring. In particular, if you're frequently crossing the LFC boundary of whatever setting you're using, then it could induce some relatively strong flickering. Now, I don't like the high setting here, and that's because I really dislike having an 18 hertz dead zone from 121 to 139 hertz, where VRR just completely disables itself. Even with my RTX 5090, there are some scenes in some games where I'll be in or cross through that range, and I find the sudden introduction of tearing and stuttering quite jarring. I do like the middle setting though, and that's what I'm using at the moment. I just get a general feeling of reduced flickering using this setting. That certainly applies in the game itself, but also when I'm on menu systems in games and in maps. 
there's usually quite obvious VRR flickering with the setting disabled, whereas with the setting set to middle, it's much less of an issue. Now, a problem I had with the first generation of the technology was that when the frame rate was around 80 frames a second, the LFC boundary was crossed using this middle setting. And purposefully using the scene here, because first of all, it's a good one for showing VRR flickering. And second of all, I've set things up specifically so it's crossing the LFC boundary using the middle setting. So it's going above and below 80 frames a second consistently which is why it's suddenly jumping up to nearly 200 and then right back down. So these are massive fluctuations. But even with that, I think really the luminance compensation algorithm does actually help quite a lot here. And it just blunts the flickering. I know in the video, you can probably see a fairly constant flickering at the moment there. You don't actually observe that by eye, certainly not in the same way. So this is why I said it's hard to show you in the video what things would actually look like by eye but you'll just have to take my word for it that I do prefer this implementation to the first generation of the technology. Now, given the overall reduction in flickering elsewhere using the setting, not to have specifically set a game up to purposefully cross the LFC boundary of the middle setting. I don't, honestly, it doesn't happen very much when I'm gaming most of the time. I'd spend a lot of time in the triple digits. So it's not perfect. I would say that if you're frequently crossing this LFC boundary with the middle setting, so, you know, that's happening all the time in your games, then you might as well not use the middle setting. You're probably better off using the off setting just because it will shift the LFC boundary down so you're not going to be crossing it. But that's a very specific scenario and in most cases you're going to be playing different games and different scenes and the games will have different kind of performance. So you probably will find the middle setting better than the off setting but you just have to experiment for yourself for your own system and your own games. Because I do feel it really has improved the technology from 1.0 to 2.0, I'm quite Curious to see what happens with the third generation of the technology, if there is one. Definitely further improvements can be made. It's it's far from perfect. There's still VRR flickering. It's certainly still a feature. And sensitive users may well find it bothersome with any setting, depending on the fluctuations occurring. So it would be nicer if they had some way of, you know, really compensating with gamma changes so that you just don't notice it at all or it's super mild all the time.